in for their spacewalk prep, and Peggy and I got to work on the S1 install. It was, was going to be a long day for us, and we got to work with the unbirth. And it does take two people to fly that arm. There's a lot going on there. You've got to manage the camera views. You have to do the actual flying, keep an eye on the procedures. There's calm between the ground, calm between the shuttle. Just a whole lot of work. We actually stopped uh, a couple times and put the brakes on so we could fly over to the shuttle windows and look out the pilot's window and see what the 30,000 pound truss looked like at the end of the Canada arm because the whole time we were only flying from camera views and it was really beautiful to go look out the window and see what the truss looked like and out there hanging over the edge of this, the shuttle payload bay. Well, we worked through the procedures. There are some great procedures and we got up and got the install done. And once the install wasn't done, we attached this truss with some bolts to the S0 truss and reconfigured for the EVA. Meanwhile, back in the airlock, the EVA team are imprisoned still on their uh, masks. When the pressure's down, we squirm into our spacesuits, and uh, Pam and Fyodor have put the final touches. You can see being gentle with us there. And it comes the moment to put on the helmets, and there's a final clunk, which is, means helmet on for the next 10 hours. And we're sealed in there good. Fyodor and Pam check out the lights, all the extra equipment, one last look over everything. And it's time to cram us into the airlock. But before that, we always indulge in a few pagan rites to appease the EVA gods. <laughs> These little ceremonies are very, very important to ensure mission success <laughs> if you do them right. Shove one guy in face first so that he's facing the hatch. Put in all the luggage. Shove the other guy in feet first. And there's just enough room to basically not scratch your nose because you can't. Close the hatch. And then it's another hour, and then you're ready to go out. Now, this is an exciting moment. Opening the hatch, it's a 240-mile drop, so don't let go. Squirm out, look around, grab a handrail, and then get to work. A lot of distractions. Here's a night pass. We've got thunderstorms going on below us. We're meant to be working, but sometimes it's just irresistible to sneak a peek at what's going on down there. Manhandling bits of equipment, moving them around, fighting with each other occasionally. No, not really then using power tools to bolt things in position. A lot of heavy work, uh, particularly on EVA-1. It's good that we had our tools checked out in a thoroughly professional manner by EV-1. And this is really the only way to get things done. We make our way out at times to the very end of the truss, and we call this the end of the world, and it really feels like you're out there. That's a camera group that we installed. We worked together as a team, and that's the view back. You can see the sh real support. This is, we ride the arm that, that Sandy is driving much of the time to do the detailed work. And if you happen to look, dare to look down, which I tried to avoid, tried to mainly focus on the station, you could get to these incredible views, which if you let yourself, you can get kind of lost in. There's the empty payload bay. It used to have the truss inside the laboratory module.